The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. There's a lot of stuff going on in the sports world today. We've got all kinds of fun interactions to get to whenever it comes to college football, obviously, because we always love talking about college football during season on this show. And college basketball. We're going to get into a little bit of college basketball because college basketball season is finally here. We're getting closer and closer to March Madness, which makes it a little exciting. We're also going to break down a little bit in the NHL and get touch on the NHL, which I'm sure is going to make Jeremy very happy being able to talk about hockey season. And we're going to dive into the NHL. NFL. So really, we're going to just touch on all of it today. So stick around with us today as we get to all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. I'm your host, Josh Mahler, and I'm very happy that you guys were able to join us this fine Thursday as you're watching this. We're recording on a Wednesday, so keep that in mind uh, as we as we say all of these things so that way we don't get roasted too terribly. But, man, we're, we're very excited to have you guys here along with us. Uh, and, man, there's there's just so much when it comes to, to covering sports. There's so much to keep up with, so much to take a look at, and... What better way to do it than on a fine Wednesday evening for us and Thursday morning for you guys to dive into it and get caught up in the uh, world of sports just in general because it's just it's it's been a hectic time right now. There's so many things breaking loose. Uh, we're going to talk about Harbaugh situation. Uh, we're going to get into the NHL and talk about a team that's finally uh, keeping themselves away from breaking history in a bad way. Uh, and I don't want to give any away any spoilers just yet. Um, and then you know just all of this. But of course before. Before we get into it, as we love sports, uh, we also want you to love sports and also get into a little bit more into sports, maybe get more involved with the sports that you're watching, and that is by sports betting, all right? So, I mean, obviously, I think uh, sports betting can be a terrible thing, but if you use it just as, as a fun way of entertainment and you don't take it too far and you, you gamble responsibly, it can be really fun, and it really has grown in popularity because of the fun that you can have from it, as long as you keep yourself responsible in how you do it. Uh, and it's, it kind of gives you a little bit more action in on the game, gets you more invested in on the games that you're watching. Uh, and one great thing about about uh, sports betting is line shopping. And it's very important. I think line shopping for the best odds really matters. And that's why any profitable sports better is going to need multiple sports books. You're going to need more than just one so you can take a look and see which one's going to give you the best odds and what's going to give you uh, the most money in return for winning these bets. And thankfully, there's never been a better time to get signed up. And we're here to connect you with the best promotions completely industry-wide, all right? So it's not just with one sports book or the other, even though this month we're using FanDuel as our competition. Uh, there's more that you can look at, like DraftKings or Bet365, BetMGM, uh, Caesar Sportsbooks. There's so many out there, and it just seems like there's just a never-ending uh, never ending growth to how many sports books are, have been put out there. Uh, using our link, it's going to be down in the, in the description. Uh, you can go to rising2.com slash bet. That's R-I-S-I-N-G gto.com slash bet you go there and you can get access to all the sports books that are in your region so it automatically lines them up for you one hard thing about choosing a sports book is knowing what's available to you it's very easy you go to rising2.com that's r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o.com slash bet and it will show you everything that is available and it'll also give you a review of each platform and its unique features and most importantly this page automatically connects you with the top promotions at each sports book allowing you to start line shopping with an enhanced bankroll. So, uh, for example, the one that we've been pushing this month is FanDuel. You go over to, and sign up for, to, with, with FanDuel by going to rising2.com slash bet. And right now the deal is that you bet $5 of your own money and FanDuel will give you $150 in bonus bets to use. That's house money to win yourself some some extra cash. So why not go over there and get signed up? And there's so many more deals out there. So go to rising2.com slash bet. Uh, and again, that is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com slash B-E-T. If you want to take advantage of these benefits, 
tickets, and you can also support our brand here at Rising to the Occasion, please consider signing up for your next sports books at rising2.com slash bet. Uh, before we get too far into this episode as well, I also want to remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. You can also hit that like button. That helps us out a lot. Uh, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. We're going to get to some reviews and, and share some of the reviews that have been shared with us later on. Uh, maybe not in this episode, but we will get to some of those just because we appreciate you guys for doing that. You can always leave us a review also by going to rising2.com and click that little review button up there uh, and check us out there. Uh, we really do thank you guys so much for all the love and support. And you can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, and even TikTok. Uh, so you can join us on all of that. Um, and another thing before we get into all this news, I've got to bring in my co-host for this evening. I got Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Just got off work and just catching up on everything still a little bit. But obviously, I know we got a lot of good stuff to talk about tonight. Like, obviously, as you mentioned, with college football, just going through the AP poll again and just talking about just some of the some of the teams that we've gone over the last several months just going through college football and just even talking about the upcoming Michigan sign stealing scandal that just recently popped in through ESPN news and I was really kind of shocked when I heard about that but obviously outside of that obviously I'm going to be talking a little bit more compared to what I used to just going to NHL since that's finally kicking in it's really fun to see the NHL back in full swing and getting into that topic again but even going into the NFL, obviously, we're going to be talking about um, updates, rankings, and stuff like that. Like, I think if I remember, right, we're going to be talking about our top five teams, and then that's going to be pretty interesting because I know we all probably have different opinions on our top five teams. But of course, like obviously, as you mentioned, Josh, um, guys, I love FanDuel so much. I just recently got into FanDuel, and I haven't taken long, and I've already loved it. So, guys, sincerely go check out FanDuel. You will love it, and I sincerely mean that when I say it. But I'm going to cut the chit chat, Josh, because I know we got a star lineup tonight. So let's get rolling with. It. Yeah, and we're getting to a pretty good start this month too with with really the whole team. Uh, we're all cranking it, cranking down yeah. on FanDuel too. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, and it's it's fun to bring back this competition too, just because this is one that we we used to have and we kind of kept ourselves out of it, and uh, then finally bringing back into it. So and we're able to do it with with multiple different you know multiple uh, uh, sports books and try it out different ways too. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, and f- using FanDuel, like I said, uh, and, and I, I'll keep on saying it, uh, it's it's been really fun to get into to FanDuel and try this out because this is something new uh, for me. But yeah, let's get into it, man, because we've got a lot that we want to touch on today. Uh, And let's start off with college football. We're in college football season. We're talking a lot about college football while we're in college football season because here shortly it's it's gone. Uh, We talked about that, you know, last uh, last episode. But let's get into First, the top ten. Let's let's talk about the reaction to the college football playoff poll, uh, and I've got that pulled up on my phone because I didn't think to put it down in my notes for some reason, even though we're talking about it. Um, but we've got, we'll go through. Man, really, just the the, the top twenty five. Um, should I start at the top or should I start? Should I start at the bottom? Start at the bottom. Why not? All right, let's start at the bottom. Uh, number twenty five. We got K State. Uh, tough loss to. Texas. Uh, I don't know if I disagree with ranking them a top tw- in the top twenty-five, but thinking about overall, uh, I feel like there's. I'll, I'll talk about why I think maybe a three-loss team doesn't deserve to be in the top twenty-five right now, depending on who they are and who they lost to. I think K-State. When you think of them and who they lost to, uh, they lost to Mizzou. They lost to Texas. And I'm trying to think of who their third loss would have been to, um, but you know, just just looking at K-State. Uh, t- they're they're in a, they're they're at number twenty five. North Carolina at twenty four at seven and two. Uh, they just had uh, you know a, a tough loss here a little bit ago. Uh, let's see, we got Tulane at eight and one. I like them being up in the top twenty five. Iowa at number twenty two at seven and two. Arizona at twenty one at six and three. And Notre Dame at number twenty at seven and three. Uh, which which of these teams do you not like being in the top twenty five? Uh, so far, from number twenty down through twenty-five, we've got Notre Dame, Arizona, Iowa, Tulane, North Carolina, K State. 
I kind of don't like K State situation. Like that's a big thing. Obviously, having three losses on the year. I, I don't remember who their third loss is. I'm trying to think of that as well, Josh. But I know, obviously, don't get me wrong. K State, they're they're still a good team. But I mean, still only having a six and three record. That one kind of surprised me a little bit. Like if you look at look throughout the the previous five that you just listed. Like you look at the other one I was going to pick was Arizona. But you got to think for who they've had against this season and. I still think back to – I know it's not Arizona State, but I still think it's of Arizona. I always get Arizona and Arizona State mixed up because I was thinking Arizona versus Washington, but that's not the right one. But Arizona – between Arizona and K-State, those are my two surprises. But overall, Josh, what was your biggest surprise out of these first five that you just listed off? So with Kansas State, if we're going to leave a, a, a three-loss team up there, I feel like Kansas State does have an argument to be made because they lost to Texas, who's – currently ranked uh, number seven uh, and let's see and they yep. lost to uh, Oklahoma State and Missouri so if we're, if we're taking that Missouri's four, 14 and uh, Oklahoma State's 15 so uh, you know losing to number seven number 14 and 15 that's tough so if we're going to leave a, a, a top you know a, a three loss team in the top 25 they drop two spots down 225 so you're basically saying you're on the verge uh, of, of exiting but I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, you know, like North Carolina, at seven and two, I, I think they deserve to be up there. But they're they're ranked behind Iowa. I don't I don't like that. I think they're better than Iowa. Uh, and then also Arizona at six and three. What's what's Arizona done to deserve to be in the top twenty five at six and three? And you know, then no, Notre Dame at seven and three. You got LSU at six and three. But I can give them a little break again. I think they're kind of down there where I would probably put them a little lower, but you did lose to some big, big opponents. You lost to Alabama, Florida state. Uh, and then who was their third one? I'm, I'm drawing blanks on all, all these teams and, um, and who they've played. That's how far along we are in the season. Uh, let's see. They lost to Florida state. They lost to Ole Miss, uh, who's yes, also ranked up there. So, uh, you know, Ole Miss is ranked up and, and I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves with that, but they're ranked in the top 10 at number nine. So okay, I, I can I can leave LSU in there as well. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm looking at at, uh, at at some of these three loss teams. The only thing I have against it is you've got Liberty, who is undefeated at nine and zero, uh, and I know they're a Group of Five team, but they're undefeated. You're you're not putting them in the top twenty five, and you've yeah. got uh, JMU, who we're actually going to talk about here later on as well. James Madison is is also undefeated. And they've been blowing their opponents out of the water. I hate this idea that you can't rank them in the top 25 because they're new to the FBS. They're new to this conference, so they can't play in the conference championship game as if they need to adjust. I think that's ridiculous. We've talked about that before on this show. I think last season when we were talking about Southern Alabama, I think it was that couldn't compete in their their conference uh, championship because they're brand new to the conference and all this. I think that's that's uh, that's stupid to me that you can't rank these guys, you can't put them up up there. Um, but then Liberty, I don't know why Liberty wouldn't be ranked because they were ranked uh, right now. So I guess Liberty is ranked number 25 in the AP poll, which I still think that's kind of low when you really compare it. James Madison's 21 in the AP poll. So maybe the AP poll got it right on those. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know if I agree with the committee not putting those two teams in because they're undefeated. Yeah, to me, I, I agree with you. I think some of these stipulations that you look at certain teams, I think it's bogus just because, like you said, JMU and Liberty, these two teams, they're not just – they're not having close competition-wise. They're putting up the points. And you get teams like this. I understand, like you mentioned, this is their first time in the FBS, but still, I think it's bogus. You shouldn't look, have to look at that aspect. You should still see this kind of a team as equal compared to, like, an Alabama or, like, a Georgia or – LSU type and obviously it's I get it that you're broken up into different sanctions and brackets and all that kind of stipulation but still you need to you need to treat this as we're all one big group of college football teams and we're still all trying to fight for the same aspect and get everyone else, in my opinion a fair shot into trying to get into the college football playoffs yeah really I mean it, it's just I, I can understand not ranking them up in the top 10 if they're undefeated because it's Liberty. Liberty doesn't really – I don't think you have those those one-off teams like Cincinnati when they got into the, the top four to make it to the playoffs. I think Cincinnati proved they belonged there. They belonged where they could at least have their shot. 
um, because you they see did. them against Alabama, and they put up a good fight. All right, they, they didn't get completely blown out. They didn't get killed. Uh, they they didn't stand a chance to win, but they put up a fight. No. All right, so I think there's those one-off uh, scenarios, and I think UCF back whenever they were undefeated two years in a row and didn't get in, that was a little bogus. Um, but when you look at teams like Liberty, I don't think they deserve to be in the top ten. They deserve to be in the top twenty-five, though. That's that's all I'm arguing for. Uh, you know, they they deserve yeah. to be up there and give their recognition um, because that's I don't know. And then as far as not playing in a conference championship for JMU, James Madison is absolutely killing it uh, in their conference. And so you look at what they're doing. How can you say that they need to adjust before because they're killing their opponents? There's there's no there's no competition there. Uh, so they, they should they should be up there. But let's jump up above above uh, top twenty. I also don't know how I feel about Notre Dame being as high as they are with three losses right now. Uh, so I, I will throw that out there. Um, but let's go to LSU at number nineteen, Utah at number eighteen, Oklahoma at number seventeen. Uh, they dropped eight spots, uh, and then Kansas moving their way up five spots uh, at number sixteen, Oklahoma State at fifteen. So you've got fifteen, Oklahoma State. And then Kansas, Oklahoma, Utah, LSU. How are you feeling about that that five? There's a lot you can really stipulate off of each team. Like obviously for Oklahoma's standpoint, we all started they had a great beginning of the season. And then obviously ever since, like I said last time, but after the Texas game, it's just been hang on and survive obviously losing to kansas then losing to the bethlehem battle against oklahoma state but then like utah we haven't heard much of talk from utah really to be completely honest with you um like i I agree with you on a stipulation lsu look at who they've played like you said against alabama and these really good teams but like I, now, since we're getting above the top 20, now, like, some of these teams, they're starting to make a little bit of sense just because, obviously, like, who they've played and just the overall stipulation of it and just yeah, how I, their season's gone. But I, I think this five makes sense overall. I like Utah being there because it, they, they did put up a, a good fight uh, against a few top teams, and then you see, uh, you know, them, them beating Florida, I think, was a good win. I know Florida's not great yeah. this year, but that was a good win early in the season. Uh, you beat USC, I think that was a good win, especially the fashion in which you did it. Um, and then I do really, so obviously I don't like LSU being that high right now. I can sort of understand who they lost to. I get it. But uh, then I, I really do like the order of Oklahoma State, Kansas, then Oklahoma, because you have Oklahoma State who beat Kansas, so they, they do deserve that t- that spot right up above them. And then you've got Kansas uh, who beat Oklahoma. So you, you've, you've got a good a good flow there. And, and you know, Oklahoma's mm-hmm. two losses to those two teams ranked right ahead of them. So I, I, I like the reasoning and, and the logic behind that. How about Kansas, man? Seven and two right now and looking like they could win a few more. Uh, I want to pull Kansas's schedule up really quick just to take a look at this. So they've got Texas Tech winnable, Kansas State winnable, and Cincinnati winnable. We could be looking at a 10-win Kansas team competing in the, in the Big 12 championship in all reality. This is Kansas. Mind blown here. This isn't the same basketball school we're used to seeing. I love what Lance Leipold is doing there. I hated seeing them beat Oklahoma. Uh, and, and you know what? You can you can say Oklahoma beat themselves in that game, which I think was true. But at the end of the day, Lance Leipold has his guys ready to go, and they don't care that the other team's beating them uh, or that, that they're they're beating themselves. They're still taking advantage of the fact that that other team, who's better than them, is beating themselves. So you know, round of applause to Lance Leipold and what he's doing there at Kansas. Man, I love to see it. I absolutely love to see it. Uh, and, and I'm I'm really excited for Kansas in their future. Now that Oklahoma and, and Texas are leaving too, uh, maybe the new face of the Big 12. But let's jump up to number 14. We got Missouri. I still like that because you just lost to Georgia. You can't take too much. Uh, arguably number one Georgia, who's really ranked number two in this poll. Uh, and then you've got number 13 Tennessee. They moved up four spots. Uh, I like that. I think Tennessee looked really tough this past weekend against Utah. Uh, Utah. Uh, UConn. Sorry, I'm, I'm just I'm being a little uh, <laughs> stupid. I almost said something I can't say. Um, and then, you know, the way that they handle business to Kentucky, they had a tough one against Alabama, uh, you know, so, uh, just Tennessee at number 13. And then you've got Oregon state at 12. I like that because again, Oregon state 
only has a couple of losses that are reasonable, uh, and then they just had a, another big win. Uh, and then you've got Louisville at 11, and number 10, Penn State. Uh, so there you go. You've got all the way up to number 10. Uh, I- any one particular team stand out to you that they shouldn't belong? Getting up this far, every team, it just seems like to me, is just making absolute sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, like I said, once you get above the top 20, you really can't like you can't just throw a random team here and there. But now that we've obviously gotten above the top 20, these all, all these teams are really starting to line up and make sense. Just because, like you said, look at look at their schedule and like, look who they've beaten and look who they lost to. So, me, everything just makes really good sense, to be yeah, honest with you. And, and understanding that there is such a thing as a good loss when it comes to how you're ranking. So, you know, with with Absolutely. Texas, your one loss to us to Oklahoma in a rivalry game. And, the, you know, they were they were a tough team up to that point. Uh, they may have fallen off the face of the earth after, um, but you can't discredit them for what Oklahoma did prior to that game. So, you know, and so I, I think that's, you know, for Texas, for example, or you take a look at Missouri uh, and, and who you lost to. It, you, you can't you can't discredit a team for who they lost to when it's against another great opponent. So, uh, yeah, just looking at, at these so far. Uh, yeah, I think so far, everything in the top 20, the only thing I would change is dropping LSU and Notre Dame down and putting JMU and Liberty up there. I think they deserve to be up in the top 20 right now when you look at this rankings. And Iowa, give me a break. Iowa doesn't have Brian Ferentz. They're, they got, they fired Brian Ferentz. Uh, so, you know, good job. You finally got rid of the, the, the cancer to your program. And you still only scored 10 points against Northwestern. So I'm going to need some answers here. But anyways, jumping up to the top 10. So we've got Penn State. I already mentioned that one. You got Ole Miss, Alabama, Texas, Oregon, Washington at five, Florida State at four, Michigan at three, Georgia at two, and Ohio State at number one. I'm just going to throw that entire top 10 out there. Is there anything that, I guess, Leave the top five out of it. So top five, we've got Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, Florida State. Uh, Actually, you know what? I'm just going to say the top 10, and then we're going to go to our top 10s. I think that's the way I'm going to do this. I didn't plan this this section of the show out very well, obviously. Um, So number one, Ohio State. Number two, Georgia. Number three, Michigan. Uh, Number four, Florida State. Number five, Washington. Number six, Oregon. Number seven, Texas. Number eight, Alabama. Number nine, Ole Miss. Number 10, Penn State. I'm looking at this, and I really like this top 10 personally. Uh, and so I guess that leads me to my top 10. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, pull up my top 10 really quick. I've got number one, Georgia. Uh, I think Georgia deserves that number one spot just because they still look dominant. They still look like the team to beat. And then tied for number two, I have Michigan and Ohio State. The winner's going to need to, to prove to me who deserves to be ahead of who. Uh, I think Ohio State has the better resume. Therefore, maybe I should put... Ohio State ahead of Michigan, but Michigan's handling business, man. Like they're absolutely killing their opponents. When you look at what Michigan's done this year, they've won Eastern Carolina thirty to three, UNLV thirty five to seven, Bowling Green thirty one to six, Rutgers, uh, who we mentioned, a decent Rutgers team who just now lost to Ohio State thirty one to seven, a a a tough Nebraska defense, and I do stand by that forty five to seven. Uh, and then Michigan uh, against Minnesota, fifty-two to ten. Against Indiana, fifty-two to seven. And then Michigan State, forty-nine to zero. And then to, against Purdue this past weekend, forty-one to thirteen. This team is is blowing teams out. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm okay with putting Michigan up there at number two, uh, and and ahead of Ohio State for that reason. I just I, I can understand the reserves on Ohio State, but I do like this Ohio State team, and I've made that very clear. Number four, I've got Florida State. Number five, I have Washington, uh, and then number six, Oregon. So my, uh, and then you know, and then uh, Texas at number seven, Alabama at number eight, Ole Miss at number nine, and Penn State at number ten. So when I look at the the playoff committee, I I commend them. I think this is the most I've agreed with the playoff committee in a, in a long time, maybe ever, because I think this is a very good top ten, a very solid top ten. You can argue about who deserves number one all you want. It doesn't matter. It's all going to play out in the end. So mix it up however you want. In my opinion, I think rankings are stupid this early in the season. Still, I think you wait until week eleven, week twelve to really put the rankings out there, um, because that's when they actually matter, and that's when they're going to start to. Act actually solve each other, you know, solve the, the, the rankings out for you. So I, and personally, I like the, I like the top 10, just how it is in the, in the rankings. I, I agree with it pretty, pretty steadily, uh, ultimately. 
um, because yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this, my top 10, uh, my top fours jumbled around a little different than them. Really the top three is jumbled around different. After that, I have the exact same as the committee. Uh, so I commend the committee. I like, I like their top 10. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? Looking at the top 10 and just, I'm in the same boat with you, Josh, this is the best I've agreed with the committee here in a long, long time. But to be completely honest with you, I'd almost honestly leave the committee and how it stands as the committee says it, just because if anything, if I had to change it, I'd flip number one, number two around. But obviously you look at, you look at these top five or not even top five, top six teams. It's been locked in for forever is what it feels like, obviously. But overall, just looking at this overall stat that they have for the top 10, I'm, I'm really going to be out there. I'm agreeing with them, and I'm leaving it the way that they have it just because, like I said, these teams have just been balling all year around. And some teams that obviously look down below number number five and look at Oregon for what they've done, they've battled into this AP poll position. And even talking about, like, Ole Miss. Ole Miss, they were down in the bottom. If I Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. They, were, they weren't even in the top 15. Like, looking earlier into the year, I think maybe they were barely even – lucky to be in the top 20 yeah they were i think ranked number 20 somewhere earlier on in the season just a few weeks ago so you know that that, they've had a huge jump absolutely and and so i'm i pulled up i've got the ap top 25 i've actually got the exact same as the ap top 25 uh and and i don't think i've ever agreed with the ap rankings uh so uh, yeah I'm, i'm liking the way that everything's shaping up this year yeah absolutely this is I'm going to just say this is the best I've seen the AP and the college a- the college polls just looking at these standings just I can say within the last 10 years that I that I can physically see and if not going farther just uh, this is the best I sincerely do have to say I agree with college and the AP poll. Yeah and right now I'd say if you're in the top 11 because I'm going to include Louisville in there uh you shouldn't be comfortable about where you're at and if you're ranked number 8 or lower you have got you're a lot of spoiling seat. to do. You have you have you are sitting in a pretty good spot if you're ranked number eight through eleven. I'm looking at those teams right now. Uh, number eight through eleven uh, is Alabama. Well, I'll just say number seven through eleven because we usually leave number five and six as as the two left out. But number seven, you got Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, Penn State, and Louisville. All of those teams, I could see spoiling someone and jumping their way up into that top four very easily. Uh, you look at Louisville, they've got a chance to beat Florida State in that ACC championship game and remove them from it and put themselves there. Uh, you've got Penn State, who could upset Michigan this week. Could happen. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but we, we could see. Uh, and then Ole Miss, you could spoil someone along the way. Let's see, Ole Miss, don't they play Georgia this weekend? Uh, I believe they do. They do. They play Georgia. So... If you're Georgia, don't be comfortable about where you're at. If you're Ole Miss, realize you could you could upset somebody. Alabama, you got to You're going to make it to the the SEC championship game most likely. You're in the driver's seat for that. Win out, and guess what? You could upset Georgia and work your way up there. Uh, and, and then of course Texas just went out, win the Big Twelve, and you've got that thing, dude. It's it's basically in the bag because Ohio State and Michigan are most likely not both going to make it again this year. I don't think that happens. Uh, the winner of the ACC, I think, deserves to be up there. And then the winner of the Pac-12, if it comes down to Washington, Oregon, I think they deserve to be there. So I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this, man. I don't know. This is this is tough right now. It's it's a really tight yeah. race. Uh, I'll read off Blake's because he actually gives a lot of love to Louisville at number 10, then Ole Miss at number 9, Alabama at number 8, Texas at 7, Oregon at 6, Ohio State at 5, Washington up at number 4, uh, FSU at number three, Michigan at number two, and UGA, Georgia, at number one. So, I mean, I just, Blake, I, I know wow. you're busy. I know you're traveling on and all, man. He's he's now down in New Orleans, uh, as he says, New Orleans uh, today, and then uh, he's going to be up in Eugene. Uh, so he's not able to be with us on the show this week. But, man, we've got a lot of discussing to do because I don't like you disrespecting the Buckeyes this much. <laughs> But I, I definitely think it's hard to take the, the Buckeyes and say they're worse than Florida State. I, I think they're both right there neck and neck. But, uh, you know, really the top 
you give the favor better to Ohio State. I, yeah, the, the, the top five all deserve uh, it, right now. If we were to end the season right now and say we need a playoffs, this would be the perfect ending to say, hey, all of these teams deserve to be in, in the playoffs in the top 12. Uh, so this would be the perfect top 12 scenario, which is going to happen next year. So we'll see how it plays out next year. But right now, I like the, I'll, every every team in the top, really at the top 11. I don't think Oregon State deserves to be there unless they surprise everybody and make it to the Pac-12 championship game. Then we could discuss that, yeah. but I don't think they deserve it as a two-loss team. Um, so I'll say everyone in the top 11 right now deserves uh, a shot uh, at that national championship. And and that's that's the truth. So uh, I, I like the, the Buckeyes right now. And that's kind of my reaction to this AP top 25 uh or i guess not ap Gosh. the college football playoff top 25 you, you you messed up one thing here what's that it's pronounced louisville 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 <laughs> man this is where we really need well, blake to, and, to and clear so things up at work where we were we have a site down in louisville it's spelled the exact same but it's pronounced louisville uh, and my boss kept on saying Louisville, really? Nebraska, and I was like, "No, it's Louisville. It, it is different." Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. Um, but man, I, I don't know. Let, let's stay in in college football and let's talk about Michigan because the sign stealing scandal. For everyone who knows, uh, what's his name? Stallions. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on his name now. Um, uh, anyways, he, 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 uh, Hunter Stallions. Hundred stallions, yeah. I was yeah, thinking. is that it? All right. So <laughs> I don't know why I don't have I don't have the, uh, the 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 key information in my notes today for some reason. But anyways, uh, they this whole sign scandal, you know, sign stealing scandal. Everyone knows about it. Everyone knows a lot of the details to it. Um, but some new news comes out today uh, about it, and and kind of popping up a little bit more of an update on what's going on there because everyone's curious, and, and I think this is egregious personally, and I'll get to that. Um, but so Michigan responds back to the Big Ten that they believe three teams engaged in communications about Michigan's play calling last year in the 2022-2023 season. And those three teams are Rutgers, Ohio State, and Purdue. So they believe that these three teams were collaborating uh, with each other to steal Michigan's uh, signs. So now Michigan's saying, well, what about them? We're going to drag them down with us. If you're going to if you're going to knock us out, we're we're going to knock them down too. You're Taking everybody us. down with us, uh, as if you know. I don't know why you would attack Purdue and Rutgers. I understand Ohio State. Maybe it was just to draw them off the scent that they're really trying to get Ohio Probably. State. But that wouldn't surprise so, me. Apparently, these three teams are collaborating with each other and sending each other Michigan's uh, signs and stealing their signs. And, you know, a Big Ten source even said that the league has forwarded any information. Uh, so the, the Big Ten has forwarded any information to the NCAA for a follow-up or for a possible follow-up. Uh, and it's unknown whether the signal sharing between these teams violates the Big Ten's sportsmanship policy or any NCAA rules. So it's really just kind of all blurry at this point. Uh, even the NCAA doesn't know what's going on. And there's still an investigation from the NCAA and Michigan themselves uh, about what's going on. I think the Big Ten's just kind of the mediator in all of this is the way it sounds. And so the, 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 for everyone who doesn't understand college football, the NCAA rules do not prohibit any kind of in-game sig signal stealing. All right, it, it, There is nothing against stealing signals. To look over at the sidelines and try to figure out what their signs are and their signals, that is not against the rules to try to figure that out. What, what is against the rules is any kind of filming uh, or even any kind of uh, any kind of so they, they bar any school from off campus scouting ahead of games. So you couldn't go the week before and go into games or in, it, you also can't have any video uh, of it to really sit there and study it. So it's more or less you're allowed to steal their signs and try to figure them out on the game film or anything like that, nothing directly on the sidelines stealing their signs. And so that's kind of what's in question here uh, with Coach Stallions and Michigan and what's what was going on there. Uh, and so that that's kind of what's what's really in question and what, what what's all being investigated. And so at this point, as far as what what the Rutgers and Ohio State and Purdue did, if this is true, they're not really sure that this is even against anything. So Michigan's really just throwing this out there as maybe just, hey, get off of our backs. 
uh, and and go off onto somebody else so that we can finish off this season. Uh, so, you know, Michigan had till today, which is Wednesday, so I guess yesterday for you guys watching, uh, to respond to the Big Ten. And part of the letter that they sent to him read, uh, it is essential that the Big Ten Conference not take any discipl- disciplinary action against the University of Michigan until the final results of its own, or more appropriately, the NCAA investigation are officially announced. So in other words, Hey, leave us alone. Don't don't punish us. Let us win a national championship and a Big Ten championship, and then figure it out. You can take our wins away, because that's a thing. That doesn't actually happen. Because if if the win happened, it happens. All right, and the school's not going to take it down. They're going to keep it up on their banners. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, but I just I look at all of this. And I think it's ridiculous. I do think it's the NCAA trying to attack Michigan based on what we saw with Jim Harbaugh and the the hamburger uh, situation uh, and and stuff like that. Just a lot of ridiculousness going in with this investigation. But Jeremy, from some of the the new updates coming out, is anything making you believe that Michigan should be punished uh, for for what, what happened with all the sign stealing? No. To me, this is a, this is abundant in my opinion just like you you beat me to it it just goes back to the beginning of the year with michigan and having the hamburgers the hamburger situation which to me is still the dumbest thing ever but like you look at this overall situation it just seems like the ncaa just this season especially they just want to pick on michigan and looking at this overall satisfaction for any team that's trying to get a get a kick out of it like you just said between what were the three teams again josh ohio state Rutgers and um, Purdue. Yeah, Rutgers and Purdue. It to me it's just it's just mind boggling. Like Ohio State, you've already had a heck of a year. Rutgers, you're already having a great year. Purdue, you're already having a good year as well. Three teams not not even three not teams. All four teams have had a, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I was thinking I was thinking the opposite of Purdue. I was looking at the record backwards. Um uh no, two Sorry, out of three teams have had a great year. Yeah, two out of three teams have had a great year. Then there's Purdue, like you obviously just corrected me. But still, just this overall situation is just way abundant until something like actually is like set in stone and clear in the picture. Until until something gets brought up, I think it's just ridiculous and abundant. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, we're going to keep on to this story. This is the first time we brought this story up. Uh, I don't know why it's taken us so long. I I, I guess because when it first came out, I just thought this was stupid. And signal stealing is not... Signal stealing is not against the rules, and it happens. Uh, And guess what? Even... Even some of the stuff that is against the rules about it, like I mentioned, s- taping or going to their their practices or games and, and and watching their signals, that happens too. And so if it's if it's happening already, you have ways to combat this. Go. And and it's it's been brought up several times. I'm not the first the first uh, you know commentator, the sports commentator to bring this up that. What you do is you you recognize it's possible that this team may have stolen our signals, so we're going to have backup signals. If it feels like they're 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 using those stolen signals, we're switching to the ones that we know they don't know, and we're going to keep it keep it keep them guessing. And, and so you you do that. You switch them out pretty much every game. You should be switching them out, especially if it's a big time game. So it's it's ridiculous. Uh, I think everything just needs to be dropped and forget about it, uh, and make it known to the end uh, to, to the rest of of college football. If we can try to abide by these rules, this is this is what the new punishment is going to be. If we find out that you're not abiding by these rules, make that all very clear going forward. But outside of that, can we just stop? Because <laughs> it's, it's starting to get Please. ridiculous. But we will c- try to keep updated with this story, especially if there are uh, any kind of punishments from these allegations. But Jeremy, should we jump on to college basketball? Dude, it's the time of the year. Basketball is in full swing. Let's jump to it's it, dude. It's the time of the season for basketball. Josh, take the podcast, egg. College basketball, baby. And it started off with an amazing one because the opening day of college basketball, and it all already felt like March Madness, guys, because James Madison, we mentioned them, amazing in football, all right? They've been really good in football. That's why they made they worked their way out of, uh, you know, division, I think they were division two, uh, and worked their way up to D1. They're in the FBS now, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're kicking butt in football. But you look over at basketball, and this pro, this entire school 
is just having a, a, a heyday with their athletics right now because now their college basketball team, their men's college basketball team, upsets Michigan State 79-76 to in overtime. This was JMU's first ever top 25 win in program history, uh, which was amazing. And it's also Tom Izzo's first loss ever in the month of November. That's That's crazy. Uh, as a Michigan State head coach, anyways. I didn't look any further back before that. But this is the first time that an AP top five team lost their season opener to an unranked team since 2005. Do you know who that team was? It was Michigan State. What? Against Hawaii. How crazy is that? So you've what? got almost, uh, uh, almost uh, uh. you know, so I guess 19 years later, you're the team that breaks this long streak of never, you know, top five teams never lost to an unranked team in their season opener until today when you spoil it again. Uh, I, 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 I kind of find that Michigan State fans, I hate it for you. It is the first game of the season, though. You shake it off. You've got the rest of the season to look forward to it. Uh, you know, I, I think I think Michigan State most likely bounces back, especially how we saw them perform last year in the tournament in March Madness. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of those really fun things. And looking at Terrence Edwards over there for JMU, having 24 points leading his team, and uh, Raekwon Horton, who made a three-pointer with about eight seconds left on the on the clock in overtime to end up forcing it to win it, 79-76. Uh, to 76. What an amazing time right now for JMU with their football program going 9-0 and up to this point in the season. And now you've got their basketball team just kicking butt and taking names. Dude, that's why I found, once I saw the, the final score for overtime, I was – my jaw hit the floor when I realized that they pulled off the upset against Michigan State. Just looking at this team, like you mentioned, they're a really, really good football program, and now they're trying to transfer this over to – over to becoming another multi school that they're good, uh, multi uh, a good multi sport school. Just overall, just like you look at other teams in this year, we've seen a lot of teams that are becoming that way. For example, oh, who's another really good team, Josh? Um, like I'm trying to think thinking. of a really good one at the top of my head. Uh, well, look um, at Kansas. Kansas is kind of doing that right yeah, now. Yeah, there we go. They're great in basketball, um, and then now they're kind of kicking butt in even football Louisville. Right now. Yeah, Louisville. Yeah, absolutely. Even Louisville, Kentucky. Duke, Duke is doing um, it right now. Duke. I, yeah, and never mind, because I mean, Duke's not so great in, in basketball right now. Uh, they, they're not looking yeah, to. Well. They're kind of looking dookie uh, in basketball. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, but historically, you've got some teams like that, man. I mean, I just, yeah, looking at it, I'm, I'm excited for JMU. Congratulations. Uh, stepping your way up to the big leagues and and – like I said, just kicking butt and taking names, man. It doesn't matter if you're, I think, number four in the country, if I remember correctly, for Michigan State, uh, and, and and you just walk right in and kick their butt. And and a high-scoring game, too, for a college basketball game. So that, that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, and then to kind of repeat history. Um, but moving on, we've got Bronny James. I'm, I'm excited to see him hit the court, man. Uh, I, I, I really like watching him play. And it's weird because I've kind of got this thing with LeBron. I respect the heck out of LeBron. Uh, but there, there's just some off-the-court stuff that I don't like about him. And so it's not that I'm hating on the guy. I, he's he's absolutely one of the greatest to ever play. Not the greatest. Uh, MJ still holds that in my book. And then Le, uh, Larry Bird right behind him. Um, but <laughs> anyways, looking at LeBron James, I, I, I really do like him as a player. I think he's a phenomenal player. Uh, obviously, he's loved in the, in the locker room. Uh, so... Looking at Bronny, though, now Bronny comes out. Of course, he had that little uh, kind of cardiac arrest type type of situation, whatever went on there in practice, uh, and not a whole lot of information was released on exactly what happened there. But as long as he can pass some of these medical tests and medical exams, uh, he is planning on playing for USC this season. Uh, so wh- how are we feeling about Bronny? Are we, we excited, hoping that he can go out there on, on the court, or is it just – too much to listen to to all the hype around another basketball player uh, coming out there on the court. I mean, there's a little. I want to say a little bit of both in this stipulation. Obviously, for all the hype reasons, just because of his last name and who, and who his daddy is. But like for the overall aspect, I know there's a lot of people that are in that kind of a same situation where okay, I my dad's here in the league. I want to try and step up to his standards and try and be 
the number one team on the roster. But still, looking at this overall aspect, you can look at your father's reputation and you can see what he's done throughout the numerous years. But that's all his numbers. You need to focus on your aspect and your point of the game. It doesn't matter what he puts up if he puts up 33 points in a night or if he puts up 10. Like for your sake of the for your sake of the situation, you just need to simply go out there and prove a point that you belong on the court here, whether it's on the offensive side of the ball or just being on the backfield on the defense. Just simply play your game here and don't let the big reputation get to your name. And I know obviously a lot of people, there's going to be social media buzzing around Bronny James just because, like I said, who his father is. But in this overall aspect, you just need to stick to your game plan. Like I said, a lot of people in college football even, just stick to your game plan and just – Focus one step at a time here and just let the road lead you to where you want to go and just become who you really want to be. Yeah, and I think they've done a pretty good job up to this point because there's been so much hype around him, even when he was in little leagues. I can remember him just being a little kid out there on the basketball court. And, and, and of course, he, he, he looks like a baller. He looks like he's really good, but he's also going against a, a much lower level of, of competition. So we'll see how he actually matches up in college. We'll find out. I, I just I hope he sticks around for two or three years before jumping on to the NBA. Yeah. I just I, I hope he doesn't have one good season and jumps to the NBA and becomes a bust. I want to see him really, uh, really excel and, and really progress in the way that he plays. And I'm, I'm happy that he's going to USC. I think that was really cool, uh, you know, to, to see him go out to the Trojans. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool for him to, to help that, that uh, basketball program out there. Um, but let's jump on staying in college basketball. We've got Bill Self talking about Kansas and how great they are. I'm really happy that they were able to hire Lance Leipold in the college football world. But obviously we all know that Kansas is – Probably always going to be a basketball school, uh, especially as long as Bill Self is around. Bill Self, uh, the Kansas college basketball coach, he gets signed uh, to an amended five-year deal contract that's set up to be effectively a lifetime deal. Uh, he signs it, and I don't know why I didn't put it down, but I'm sure it was a. I think it was a fifty-three million dollar deal. So he is now the highest-paid college basketball coach, and the Jayhawks right now they're currently ranked number one in the country and, and college hoops. Uh, they have a back-to-back number one seeds in the NCAA uh, tournament, and they won b- two years ago back in 2022. And so you look you look at what Bill Self has built there. And then on top of that, he has two national championships total, uh, 20 league titles, including 13 straight Big 12 championships. Let me say that again. 13 straight Big 12 championships. Bill Self, man, Congratulations securing that bag. I know he gets a lot of hate, but you know what? You're always going to hate the dudes that are at the top, and you look up and you wish you could be them, um, but you just can't be them. And he's he's a phenomenal basketball coach. I think he will go down as one of the greatest. Uh, you know, we, we talked about Bobby Knight, uh, you know, losing Bobby Knight, and you think of legends left. I feel like Bill Self is one of those guys that's very similar to a legend that, that we're currently witnessing like like yeah. Bobby Knight was. Uh, so it's it's really cool to see this for him. I'm happy he was able to secure the bag. And he even gave up some money in 2020 during COVID um, because of some of the hardships that the school was going through during that time. And so now he's getting a part of that back for, for giving some of that up. And so just a selfless act that ends up paying off in the end. And I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy for Kansas being able to secure uh, a great coach like that. I just hope it doesn't turn out the way that uh, Coach K over at Kentucky uh, ended up turning out. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, literally, you look at college basketball. If you don't talk about Kansas, uh, you're not a, you're not a true basketball fan in the college world, just because literally, that's all you can ever see is Kansas. And looking at this, these other teams, like obviously like Gonzaga, or um, like even people talk about North Carolina, Louisville, and just looking at some of these teams, I know I just listed off a few, but you look at a lot of these teams and. Once they hit the court, you're going to easily find out within the first few minutes to why they're going to be up in the top talks. Just because, obviously, their playing skills, their playing ability, their um, their knowledge and just knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses, that's always a big thing between relationships on the basketball court. Just not even on the basketball court, but any any playing field in the, in the, entire, uh, in the entire world. Just But you literally talk about – 
if you don't talk about Kansas, like I said, you're not you're not following college basketball that much. But literally, like I said, my hats off to Bill as well. That's a that's a big chunk of change. But like you said, the best, Josh. If you're hating on Bill Self, you're just hating on the top dogs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I mean, I'm, I'm I'm really happy for him, and I'm happy for Kansas securing a guy like him and being able to yeah. to to keep him around this long. Like I said, 13 straight Big 12 titles, and this isn't like you know with. Uh, I, we talk about Oklahoma uh, dominating the Big 12 in college, in college football. Uh, the Big 12 in college basketball is a much different story. Uh, there, there's a there's a, a, a hard truth to being battle-tested when you come out of the Big 12 in college basketball because, man, you are going against the some of the, tough, the toughest competition. I, I think the Big 12 deserves to be mentioned as, as one of the top – uh, conferences, if not the top conference when it comes to basketball. I think the ACC is really good, uh, and you can look mm-hmm. around. I think the SEC has their their moments with certain teams, and even the Big Tw- Big Ten, but I just don't think it's as deep as the Big 12 is in, in college basketball. Um, so for him being able to do that, 13 straight Big 12 championships, that's that's crazy to me. Unbelievable. Um, but, man, let's, let's move on from college basketball, but before we do – we got to mention a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a sponsor, obviously, but a, a, something from some friends of ours over at SeatGeek. Uh, SeatGeek is an amazing site where you can go and get signed up, and you can get an amazing deal. Uh, Jeremy, I'm going down to Oklahoma this weekend, and the way I was able to secure uh, tickets down to Oklahoma was going on to SeatGeek, finding myself an amazing deal, and being able to even cop myself 20 bucks uh, on on those tickets. Uh, going to see Oklahoma, hopefully beat up on the West Virginia Mountaineers, and all you have to do is go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app, and you can use the code R2TO. That is the letter R, the number 2, the letter T, the letter O for 20 dollars off your first purchase over there at SeatGeek. It is truly an amazing uh, website and, and one of the best. I think it's the, the it's got to be my favorite. Uh, it, it, no, I, let me change that. It absolutely is my favorite to find seats there for any kind go. of game. You go there and you you download the app. If you're a mobile user, you download the app and it's so flawless. It's so so smooth. You go in there and they've got an amazing color coding system where they've got green for a great deal, yellow for not such a great deal, and red for you can find a better deal. So keep on looking for those green dots. And not only that, but I love the fact that you can zoom in and find exactly which seats you're sitting at before purchasing the tickets. Uh, it's, it really is one of the best ways to find tickets to whether it be a game, a concert, uh, a play, uh, any kind of event. We've, we even get our parking tickets on SeatGeek. So you're going to an event and you need parking, go to SeatGeek for your parking. It makes it so much easier. You you automatically get them downloaded to your phone directly, uh, immediately. It's an amazing way to get any kind of ticket to any kind of event. So guys, if you're looking for a way to download and, and to, to go and buy tickets to any kind of event around you, make sure to go to SeatGeek. If you're thinking, I'd like to go an event to an event, but I don't really know what's around me, go to SeatGeek and type in your area and find an event that is around you because there's so much going on around you that you don't even realize, and SeatGeek has it all. You can go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use the code R2TO there at the bottom of the screen for $20 off your ter- your ticket purchase. Go there today, guys, and check it out, I promise. Uh, and as Jeremy would say... You will not be disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, it really is my favorite way to buy tickets. Uh, just so much easier than anything else I've ever used. Uh, and, and they give you the, the, the price up front. You don't have to click through and, and try to find the price and be like, oh, crap, I don't want this. The price that they give you is the price that you're paying for the tickets, as easy as that. Uh, and, and one of the best, and, and I understand that there's got to be fees, but there's other competitors that just charge too much, and SeatGeek doesn't do that. So again, guys, SeatGeek.com and use code R2TO for $20 off. But Jeremy, let's get to your favorite. We're getting to the NHL. It is NHL season, man. I was having so much fun watching. I, I watched a little bit of Maction last night and won some good money on that. Uh, cashed out on a parlay just in time. Um, but uh, that Central Michigan game, Western Michigan game, that was a lot of fun. But then on top of that, I was also able to click over and watch some hockey going on. Uh, won a, a better parlay on hockey last night. Uh, and you know what? I almost, almost, I was this close to adding one more team in my parlay. And that was the Sharks, the San Jose, Jose Sharks. I was going to pick against them because I thought they're sitting there at 0-11. 
they, 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 mm. they're on an 11-game losing streak. I'm going to bet against these guys, but they're going against the Flyers, and I wasn't totally confident because the Flyers aren't looking too great this year. But the San Jose Sharks, they end up winning against the Flyers. Good job, boys, because you, you kept yourself out of the, the, the history books um, because the San Jose Sharks, they avoided becoming the first team in NHL history to lose their first 12 games of a season. Uh, they beat the Flyers 2-1, to one, a very close matchup. And according to Reuters, the Sharks entered uh, play Tuesday tied with the 1943-44 Rangers and both the 17-18 and 21-22 and Arizona Coyotes for the most consecutive losses to start an NHL season with 11 losses. So they, they matched those three teams with 11 losses straight. But now uh, they stopped them, themselves and they now improved to 1-10-1. and 10 and 1. Uh, so good job, San Jose Sharks, because you're not in the record books for something that you would hate yourself for being in the record books mm. for. Uh, so that was that was a really good win for them to be able to pull that off. And I feel like that's a big just weight lifted off their shoulders because, man, all the talk in the NHL has been about how terrible the Sharks started off this season. And it's just looking worse and worse. And you think of just a few years ago, them winning it all, turning into this. I mean, just a huge turnaround for the worse and just diving off a cliff off the face of the planet right now. Um, but I mean, how about them sharks pulling off a win, man? Thank God. Cause that was <laughs> atrocious. Just listening to sharks, lose sharks, lose shark, lose. I've always been a fan of the San Jose sharks and just watching them play just cause like you mentioned it the best, Josh, a couple of years ago, they won everything and they made the entire state of California known for that. We're going to bring back the old school San Jose sharks. And just for how, old and dominant that they played. I know obviously them losing some key players, but you you would think with losing a few people, I know they've been I've been they've been together for many, many, many years, but you would think that they could still find a connection to be able to get points on the board and W's in the win column. But um the there's a reason why I'm sitting where I am and I'm not behind the bench coaching, but you look at the overall game, obviously Mackenzie Black went in between the pipes, the former New Jersey goalie. Then I I don't necessarily think he's been in the net for all 11 games, but I mean, I could be wrong with that factor that I'm not hundred percent sure with you guys, but everyone is finally happy, obviously in the San Jose locker room. I know obviously getting that first win is the hardest thing ever. And then going on from there, it's just, just going one one period at a time, or that's what my, my hockey coach always told me. You just got to face one period at a time and then go to the next period. But this is something that really, really mind boggles me, obviously, losing your first 11 games. And I, I know for a fan base like San Jose, their fan base is an unbelievable fan base. Look at the NHL. Their fan base, no matter where you go, is an unbelievable fan base. But you look at some of this aspect and – excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but you look at the, some of this aspect and – you think of the San Jose Sharks and what their history has been just for like looking at names like Jumbo, Joe Thornton, uh, Brett Burns, and I can keep going on and on and on. But this is an organization that they definitely need to find something here within the next couple weeks, even within the going the first month. Outside of losing 11 games straight, they definitely need to find something here. Otherwise, that coach and there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be on the hot seat. And when the trade deadline comes around, if you're still losing games, I can guarantee you there's not going to be a lot of people that want to be playing for the San Jose Sharks. And if they do lose players, they're just going to simply get players, if I had to honestly guess, from the minors getting called up just so they could maybe sincerely try and get a spark into the San Jose Sharks organization. But you look at this kind of game, like I said, this is not your normal San Jose Sharks team, and they definitely need to jump back in the water and get some – get some water in the gills and find their way to actually string a few games here and get some dubs. Yeah. I mean, you, you pulled off a win. It wasn't to the greatest team in the NHL or anything. You're sitting there, uh, you know, winning against currently a, a, a five and seven who was five and six before this game, uh, flyers team. So it's not like the greatest win, but you look at their last two, two games, losing a combined 20 to three, uh, so they lost the Canucks 10 to one and then the penguins 10 to two. So they were, they've been getting killed, and and just didn't have any answers in in the last several games and up up really through the through the from the beginning of the season, uh, so the fact that they were able to pull that off, uh, really happy for them there. 
Uh, jumping over to my Rangers, though, starting off to a 9-2 and two start. Uh, they were one of them that I picked in our, our FanDuel bets. Uh, they were able to pull off a really good win. I was really happy with how they were able to, to win it. Uh, I picked them to cover one and a half too, so that was a, a tough one. They were winning pretty pretty solid. I think at one point it was five to zero uh, at five the end of the zero, second, five to one, and then one and, the, the and yeah, and then the the third period, uh, the Red Wings came back and scored three. So I was kind of biting my nails. Like, Ooh, you guys are making it close. Don't let them score another one. And they end up winning five to three. I secured that one in the bag. Uh, not only that, but the New York Rangers off to a pretty good start. So they're nine and two, not the best start, um, but it's still a, an amazing start. And you can't be, can't be too upset with that. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, you look at the New York Rangers, obviously, with having Shesterkin in the pipes. Look at what he's brought to the table last year. Shesterkin has just been absolutely mind-boggling a lot of defensemen, and even looking at the wingers, they've just been they just been trying to find his weakness. But you look at Shesterkin, and he's a solid goaltender. And, I mean, look at from when he played in the minors and now transforming those same stabilities and tactics that he's done in the minors transferring into the NHL he's definitely put up a he's definitely put up a good aspect but like you said Josh having a 92 start for the year that's really really good then obviously looking throughout the rest of the league looking at the Atlantic obviously Boston is up at the top only having to lost one game and just being unbelievable at the start of this year obviously if when the playoffs start, we all hope for Boston that it doesn't go like what they did last year. And then even looking at the Western Conference, obviously, having Colorado up at the top there, I think if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I want to say they're saying that maybe eight and three. Um, then obviously the going to the Pacific Division, talking about the Golden Knights, like we'll be – we saw last year they were absolutely dominant and this is another team that i'm going to sincerely say this team will be in the stanley cup finals if they keep playing like how they are now i know the season just started but still you get these guys and look at what they've look at what the dumper stat wise for being repeated stanley cup finalists or getting first in points first in face off circus for, uh, which team are you talking about points, the, the vegas golden knights okay the golden knights yeah um, i like that I like that. Like you look at them, like I said, coming compared to winning the Stanley Cup last year, now playing in the regular season of this year. They're first in points, they're first in face off percentages, they're first in goal center saves, they're first in a lot of these things. And don't get me wrong, the Pacific Conference is, is um not the Pacific Council. The Pacific Division is a really, really good division. Obviously, you got the Canucks, the Kings, the Seattle Kraken, then the Edmonton Oilers, then the team that we are thankful that I finally got the first win. Um, but, like, I mean, you, you look throughout each division, you got really, really good teams sticking out in each division. But looking at it, when it comes down to the time to where you look at the playoff perspective, if I had to give you my honest guess for you guys, looking at a Stanley Cup final between, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw the Golden Knights going back to the Stanley Cup. And looking at the other divisions, I wouldn't be surprised. But I can easily see, like – depending how their season goes, maybe seeing New York make it far, or I can even possibly see the Boston Bruins, like everyone's expected office coming last year, having a horrible playoff run, like what they did losing in the first round to the undisputed Florida Panthers that in my opinion, yeah. put up the, the best season of their crew of the organization's history. But I mean, there's so much obviously hockey left, so I can't really say much, but as the season I, goes down, it's definitely going to get more and more exciting. I, I made a bad prediction of, of my Rangers. I, I predicted them having a slow start to the season, and that's not being the case at all. I'm really happy to see them bouncing back and, and responding. Uh, you know, with all of the offseason moves that they had, I wasn't really ecstatic about it, but I, I didn't pay enough attention. And I, I made that very clear whenever I made that prediction. I haven't paid a lot of attention to all the offseason moves, but uh, losing some of the guys they lost and seeing what they bring back in, I wasn't super ecstatic about how it's going to start off, but it's looking like a good start, and I'm excited. But another team that, that you had a, a bet on in uh, your FanDuel bets was the Colorado Avalanche. You picked them to win. It was tied 3-3. Three to three at the ending of the second period and they just blow out the the devils score three more in the third period alone to yeah to put down six to three uh that was an amazing win too i don't know how much of that game you were able to catch but that was a really fun one and that was one i ended up putting an, an over on, on on a personal bet too uh so just the avalanche man i I know eight and three doesn't sound as good as a lot of these other teams around, but again, it's early in the season. That record doesn't really reflect a whole lot this early in the season. Uh, it's it's really exciting to see what they're putting together so far. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about the Colorado Avalanche. Just look at what they've got for a lineup. Obviously, talking about Kale McCarr, some guy named Nathan McKinnon. I don't know if you ever heard of him. But, I mean, you can just literally go on and on and on. Like, they have a lot of depth in that roster. And just even looking in between the pipes, obviously. Like you said, an 83 start is, is still a good start. Don't get me yeah, wrong, but it's absolutely. not like – what they're, it's not what they're ideal thinking. Of course, everybody wants to be undefeated, but good yeah. luck being that lucky. Um, but like looking at this overall aspect for the Central Division, like you got the Dallas Stars that are right on their tail at seven and three. Then the Winnipeg Jets are obviously at six and four. Then the Arizona Coyotes at six and five. Then the Minnesota Wild at five and five. Then the the St. Louis Blues, I believe they have the same record. Then the Nashville Predators are down in the towards the bottom, but. There's obviously a lot of season left. Then the surprising one that is really surprising me is the Chicago Blackhawks are sitting last in the Central Division at four and seven, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, obviously, you think about obviously having Connor Bedard, of course, if you haven't heard of him, he's the guy who got fined, which I think is still bogus and the NF and the NFL. And the NHL just paid it off just to get it over with. And between the chemistry between him, Jonathan Taves, and just looking at the overall aspect of the team, that's definitely surprising. But, like, you look at who they've played so far. It's not that they played an easy cakewalk team. They've definitely had some really, really tough opponents in the beginning, obviously. Looking at the very first game, uh, you're going against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, of course, if you haven't had the opportunity, I know there's been a lot of clips flowing around the social media world between um, what Connor Bedard did on his very first game, walking out of the locker room, he forgot his stick, then obviously getting onto the ice, he forgot his brain bucket, forgot. But um, looking at this overall aspect and just even getting the first faceoff against Sid the Kid Crosby, and um, I don't think he won a single faceoff. If he did, maybe he won. Um, but looking at this overall, kind of a just an early season prediction, or I shouldn't say prediction, but early season ranking just for what we got so far. It's definitely kind of shocking to, for where they have some of these teams replaced. But obviously there's a plenty, plenty of hockey left to go on every night. Then I, that's one thing I'm really, really ecstatic for, Josh. And I know obviously you're going to bank back into hockey like I have been. But, I mean, definitely going back to your New York Rangers <laughs> – they're definitely going to be a team that you want to definitely watch out for just even just playing against just Sturkin and oh, yeah. um, all the depth that they got. Do they still have – I can't remember, Josh. Do they still have um, – uh, I want to say it's Vladimir Tarasenko or did um, they – I think Tarasenko right left if I remember correctly. Let me let me double check on that. I don't know why I'm feeling like – Because I know uh, they lost Artini Pernarin. Then yeah. – um, uh, I sincerely can't remember. I want to say he's. They, they not still have Panarin. The, the Rangers still have Panarin. Really? Or I yeah, thought, I might have been backwards. Yeah, they do still have Panarin. Uh, let me double check though, because I believe, t- if I remember correctly, Tarasenko left. I haven't been uh, as invested in NHL yet until uh, you know once once college football season's over. Yeah, so they they do still yeah. have Panarin. He actually, I believe, he had a score the other night. Uh, or he, okay. Yeah, so. I don't know why I was thinking he was with Chicago because they still have Lafreniere. Uh, you know they still have Zabinajad. They still have Trocheck. Uh, they did lose Tarasenko. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. So I because I know I haven't seen him on the ice. I'm looking okay. through the roster right now. Yeah, they don't have Tarasenko. So uh, yeah, that, that one hurts. Uh, and, and I wish we could have could have kept him. Um, but yeah, I mean looking looking through. I mean I still have Chris Kreider. Uh, yeah, I mean you still got a lot of a lot of really good Barclay Goodrow. Uh, you still have mm-hmm. uh, Keitel. So, I mean, just Keitel, yep. Adam Fox, Gustafsson. I mean, you have a lot of your, your backup guys still, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and go, go and Watch out for Adam deeper. Fox. Uh, he Jacob will, Truba. He will put points on the board. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they still, still Adam Fox as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they were able to you know keep a hold of a lot more than I was giving them credit for uh, earlier in the season whenever I, I, I mentioned something about, or I guess, before before the season started. Uh, about them, them kind of getting. Uh, I, my prediction was bad. I thought that they would start off a little slow. They didn't. They started off uh, exactly how I would hope that they could. They could start off. Uh, so, uh, looking at that man, I mean, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, yeah. But I guess that was that was quite a bit of NHL. We got to more than what I was even planning to. I'm happy for it. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to keep on touching the, on the NF, NHL too because. Uh, like I said, I, I love getting into the NHL. I think the NHL is one of the most underrated sports in America. 
Uh, you know, it's, it absolutely is. I, I don't think it gets enough love for just the, the heart and, and the, the talent that you have to have to be able to play the game. Jeremy, you know, you know better than uh, Blake and I would. Uh, I, haven't, or I haven't played uh, at a high level at all. I've played little peewee stuff, uh, and that's about it in, in hockey. And so, I mean, it just it takes a lot of talent. Um, you know, watching, watching hockey since I was really tiny and, and just grew up loving the game of hockey, fell away from it when we weren't around it as much and getting back into it is really instilling a love of the game uh, back into, into me. But uh, let's jump over to the NFL, talking a little bit about the NFL and what's going on there. Uh, I want to start off with, with just kind of a highlight. So uh, I, I guess I want to, I want to mention the Texans right now because the Texans, a lot of people were looking at the Texans pick and the, the fact that they had to settle with C.J. Stroud, a good quarterback, and everyone was thinking, you know, that's definitely the number two quarterback. You go with him. But, man, Bryce Young, and we even talked about it. Bryce Young is the better quarterback. Mm-hmm. C.J. Stroud has has come, come out uh, swinging as a rookie. He is looking extremely good right now. And the, the Texans don't look great. But C.J. Stroud has has been playing lights out, and I think he's been looking really solid all season long. But then coming against the Buccaneers, he threw 30 for 42, 475 yards, and five touchdowns in the NFL against a very good Tampa Bay defense. I mean, the dude just came out. that He lit him up. Uh, he had a really good uh, last last minute drive there to, to go down and score. Um, Baker Mayfield had a good game, too, so hats off to him. Well, our, our team in, in fantasy football actually lost uh, because of C.J. Stroud. He had almost as much really? as our entire team, basically. Uh, just looking at what C.J. Stroud was able to do, man, I think he had like 93 fantasy points. The dude was just on fire. He could not be wow. stopped. Uh, 470 70 yards in the NFL that's that's crazy. That's that set an NFL rookie record, uh, and so I mean, just dude. I mean, this this guy has really turned heads really fast. The the Texans sitting there at four and four. I don't know. That seems like a dangerous four and four right now because if you're able to piece together the rest of their season, uh, you know, and let's see, they've got the Bengals coming up this week. Uh, you can. Mm-hmm. That, that's going to be a tough matchup. I think that's going to be a really fun one because the Bengals haven't been on top of their game uh, and, and the Texans have really been rolling here and C.J. Stroud getting into, into his rhythm. Uh, and then looking down, they've got the Cardinals. I think you can get a win there. Uh, the Jaguars, you could squeeze out a win against the Jags. I think they're a tough team. You could beat the Broncos. You could beat the Jets. Uh, you could beat the Titans. You could beat the Browns. And you could beat the Titans again, and you could beat the Colts. I mean, looking at the, they've got a very winnable schedule. At the very least, maybe two or three losses at the worst, and squeezing your way, you know, man, I don't know, squeezing your way to a playoff game. I, I see that as a possibility for the Texans with D'Amico Ryan's first year there, uh, and and the team really kind of clicking around C.J. Stroud. Uh, and then another thing to bring up too uh, was a running back uh, a running back turned into a kicker. Now I'm drawing a blank, and I didn't write that down for some reason, uh, for some What's stupid reason. The Houston Texans. <laughs> yeah, the Houston Texans had to put in their their kicker ended up getting hurt, uh, so they put in their running back. Uh, to end up kicking for them, he made a field goal, so that was one that was awesome. And then ending up kicking it, kicking it off uh, for the you know for kickoff team. That that was just a really fun thing to add to the game, which made the game even more interesting because you can't rely on a kicker because he's hurt. And so, what do you do in a tough situation like that? You put in your your running back to go kick it for you, uh, and so that was just that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, but Jeremy, do you think that this Texans team is sitting at kind of that dangerous underdog spot right now, where they could come up there and sneak up on a lot of teams here in the NFL? I sincerely think so. With list with you just obviously listing the remainder of their schedule, there's definitely an easy possibility that these guys are going to be one of those those dark horse teams that all of a sudden come out of nowhere and they can just make you really really concerned for a lot of this kind of a situation. But I was able to find that kicker. His name is Dare a gun Bowell. I'm, I know I'm, I'm terrible with names. So ladies and gentlemen, so please bear with me, but yeah, he was the one who made the 29 yard field goal. But outside of that factor, um, yes, the Houston Texans definitely 
are one of, are, I, I sincerely think they're going to be one of those dark horses teams. But obviously, you got to start with one week at a time. Going against this upcoming weekend, they got my Cincinnati Bengals. Josh, I kind of want your prediction a little bit about that. Obviously, I know the Cincinnati Bengals have been waking up. Joe Burrow's been a hundred. He seems like he's at a hundred percent now. But obviously, with Jamar Chase and his back spasm injury after this last Sunday night, um, looking at this. This lineup for the Cincinnati Bengals against the Houston Texans. Who do you think is going to come out with this one? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Jamar uh, going down. Uh, the, the run game hasn't really been there for the Bengals either. You know, Joe Mixon's been no. having his struggles. Uh, the offensive he line. He has his good days and he has his bad days. Yeah, we, we expected the offensive line to look a little better. You add Orlando Brown to the offensive line, you think that's going to make it look better. They haven't really looked very good either. Um, but, no. you know, T. Higgins stepping up and being the leading receiver, he had eight receptions, 100 and some yards. Uh, so he he looked really good on Sunday. Uh, so seeing him, I I like Cincinnati. I, I think they pull off that game against the Texans. Uh, and, and that's where it kind of gets tricky for the Texans because you do have games like that. And I think the Browns are going to be tough and the Titans uh, twice is going to be tough. Will Levis stepping in for the Titans. Uh, so that's exciting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think the Bengals squeeze it out. And, and honestly, the, the Bengals are sitting right there. They're sitting there five and three. Uh, and they're sitting in the same situation as they have the last two years. Uh, they could absolutely be another sneak up team and just take control of the AFC North. Who knows? Good luck trying to stop Baltimore is going to be my only thing. If you, it, it, Baltimore yeah. has obviously been sitting on top since the situation, but if you if you go against Baltimore, good luck. Just 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 trying to keep up with Lamar Jackson. Then now, obviously, having um, Odell Beckham Jr. finally getting his first touchdown of the of the year with them. Um, just good luck trying to keep up with Baltimore. You're going to get into Baltimore. That and even. Um, uh, Andrews for their tight end, of course. He's another stellar tight end, just like a, a lot of wrong. people consider him. Like, hmm? May Andrews. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, nah, Mark Andrews like, is my dude. Yeah, he's he's definitely putting up a lot of fantasy points, and he's putting up a lot of putting a lot of change in a lot of people's pockets for looking at uh, fan, looking on FanDuel. But I mean, just looking at this overall time for for Houston, going back to them, they're def. I think. I I can see them maybe squeezing nine to ten wins just for just for this season, but looking at the overall aspect of it, anything's possible. They can easily become a dark horse team. Oh, absolutely. Um, but let's go ahead and jump over. Since you t- brought up the Baltimore Ravens, a lot of people talking about the Baltimore Ravens looking like the toughest team in the NFL. Um, but let's let's get to the top five for us. Uh, if you can, or like if, if you've got the NFL teams pulled up in your head and you're looking at, at how they've looked throughout the season. Who do you have sitting there in your top five for the NFL teams so far this season? Because uh, currently, if you go by the power rankings right now, you've got Philadelphia Eagles, Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens, Detroit Lions, and Jacksonville Jaguars, and then Miami Dolphins and 49ers behind them. Uh, so, I mean, if you if you kind of take those teams, the Steelers are right behind the 49ers too, another pretty good team to kind of throw into the mix. But what, what's your top five teams? If you've got to put them in order, uh, put, put them from number one to five. What's your top five teams in the NFL right now? Obviously, I'd probably have Philadelphia as my number one. Happy to hear you say Looking that because I think it's delusional yeah. to put anybody ahead, ahead of them right now because they're just winning. <laughs> they're finding ways to exactly. win. You can't, you can't knock that out of them. Exactly. Um, how can you stop that tush push? Um, looking at num- looking at number two, I would honestly want to put up the Baltimore Ravens up there just for what they've obviously been doing. Then looking at number three, probably the Kansas City Chiefs even. Then looking at number four, man, this is a tough one. Um, I would honestly probably throw the Detroit Lions up there, to be completely honest with you. Like the Detroit Lions, they've been definitely proving a lot of people wrong here, and they've been they've been coming out clawing and just – looking at their season for what they've obviously done, I got to give them a lot of credit for what they've been able to put. But then going for my number five, I would probably honestly put to me, it it's a tie for number five. And a lot of people are going to think I'm going to be crazy for saying this. I'm going to, I would put the, um, I'm going to put the San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers and Otherwise, for my number top five, I'm going to be biased. 
I'm gonna put the Cincinnati Bengals at top five. Really? So you're moving the the Bengals all the way up there. So ahead of like the Jaguars, uh, or the Dolphins. Yep. Okay, I like it. I, I like the bias there, and, and admitting the bias too. But uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, pr- I'm pretty much right there on on board with you. I think right now I'm I'm putting Philly at number one. I think it's wrong to take that away from them. Uh, and then yeah. at number two, I'm right there with you. I think the Ravens just because what they what they've been showing, and then this this past weekend too. I mean, the way that they figured it out with Gus Edwards as their back and whooping up on the Seahawks, that was a really uh, interesting game to to just see how well that run game was able to really help out uh, and and it just it made them look like a better team and then sitting at there at number three I'm gonna put the Detroit Lions at number three because they beat the Chiefs earlier in the season I've got to give give them that much even though I think the Chiefs are going to be better in the end I think if they get another rematch in in that it would be the Chiefs all the way um, but. Right now, I just think the Lions, like you said, they've, they've put together a really good team. They look really good this season. So I would go Philadelphia Eagles, Baltimore Ravens, then the Detroit Lions at number three, uh, which is amazing to think of. Uh, and then after that, then I would put the Chiefs just below the Lions. You lost to them, so I've got to give them that respect. Uh, and then, man, at, at number five, I, I do want to put the 49ers up there at number five. I know they're on a three-game losing streak, but I still think that when you look at power rankings and just overall, I know that they're better. And now we just now t- we talked about this too. They just added Chase Young. We're going to see him in action for the first time this week. Uh, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Who did they go against this week? Because I'm excited to watch that. Oh, and how about that? They go against the Jaguars. So you know what? You guys can battle it out. I'll, I'll say it's a tie right now for number five. Jaguars and 49ers. You guys battle it out. The winner gets spot number five in my power rankings. Uh, so I'll, I'll, even, I'll, I'll even throw it up there just like that for you. Um, but man, I, I, I love it. I, I love seeing the, the matchups right now in the NFL, the way it's, that it's, it's winding down too. Uh, and, and just some of the big, the big, uh, storylines and stuff too, man. It's, it's been a fun, a fun year in the NFL, but Absolutely. Jeremy, should we get to our bets of the night? I guess morning Dude. for guys who are watching this. Dude, all of us have been getting, we got on a, we all got on a hot streak over the, over the last episode. So we can't forget our fan duel bets, but Josh, do we want to kick it off with yours or do we want to kick it off with Blake's? Uh, let's start off with Blake's, but uh, before I do, let me pull up this real quick because I have our standings. Uh, didn't have it ready. Here it is. One, I can make it easy. <laughs> uh, so a new leader has emerged. You can crown yours truly. As the leader, I took two underdog bets. Was able to take it, uh, take the lead from Blake. Uh, sitting at three and one, not not upset with that at all. And sitting there at, at uh, I was I was told I, I was told I need to start marking these as units rather than the winnings. So I think I'm going to do that, which is the exact same thing. Uh, so I'll change it where the the uh, earnings of the the units that I've, I'm up right now. Uh, let's see, I am up two point four units if I do the math. Uh, so I'm up 2.4 units. Uh, Jeremy, right behind me, uh, in second place, also three and one. We're we're all three and one, by the way. Uh, Jeremy, you're second place uh, with 1.74 units, and then J- uh, Blake is three and one with 1.72 units. Uh, so you know, guys, guys, we're we're doing great, uh, and you, you can't be mad at that at all. Uh, looking really good so far. Uh, let's let's keep it going uh, because I'm I'm liking the way it's. The way it's moving right now, uh, and it's it's looking good. So I mean, just overall, uh, we got a lot of betting before, uh, you know, ahead of us too. So we can't get too ahead of ourselves. But guys, if you want to join in with some of the f- the fun, we're using FanDuel. So make sure to check it out. You can go to rising2.com/fanduel and you can check it out there. Uh, if you really want to, like I mentioned earlier in the episode, you can also go to rising 2com slash bet. That is R I S I N G T O.com slash B E T. And what that does is it gives you all of the sports books available in your region. FanDuel may be one of them. You might want to check them out because with FanDuel, you can bet $5 and win $150 instantly in bonus bets. 
And those promotions may vary based on your location. So you want to check it out over at rising2.com slash bet. Go check it out. FanDuel is our sponsoring uh, sports book for this month of November, though. Uh, let me start off with Blake. Since he's not with us, we'll put him first. He's going to take on a Thursday night. So remember, we're recording this on Wednesday, but we're giving you Thursday bets. So even betting ahead of time. And he's going to take the Bucks money line versus the Pacers at minus 162. And he's also going to take the Hawks money line versus the Magic at minus 135. Uh, I'll go ahead with mine. I'm going to take Boston, the, uh, sorry, the Boston uh, money line versus the Islanders at minus 161. I'm liking those odds. And I'm going to take another underdog bet here, man. The Panthers money line versus Chicago uh, in Thursday night football. So just like last Thursday, I'm going to take a Thursday night football bet. It cashed out for me last week. Why not take another one? I think the, I think the Panthers sitting there at, at plus 145 as an underdog against Chicago. I don't have faith in Chicago. They look terrible. So Chicago and Baston, uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm on it with, with Boston. I think that I think they're going to win, but Chicago is not going to win. Uh, so oh I'm taking them Panthers money line plus 145, like in that underdog bet. How about you, Jeremy? My bets, I am sticking on that NHL side. I was confident for last weekend. It struck out and I went 2-0, so I'm going to stick on that. I got the money line for the Dallas Stars versus the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I am picking the Dallas Stars to win, and that is at minus 205. Then looking at my other one, I am picking the under on this one against the National Predators versus the Winnipeg Jets. And currently that is sitting at 5.5 at plus 114. I was really, really skeptical on the fence of it just because obviously Nashville and Winnipeg, they're both they're both sitting decent at the standings. But, I mean, I think it's going to be a close-scoring game. So let's hopefully I can strike out another 2-0 and oh, I can make a 4-0. Oh. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at that too, it's tough taking the under at 5.5 uh, in, in, in today's NHL. But thinking about these two teams, I, I like it because the Preds have a good defense. And then Winnipeg, I mean, I, I don't know so much about Winnipeg's defense, but I don't think the Preds have a, an attacking offense to be able to score much. Uh, they're more of a defensive-minded team. So I, I do like I mean, that under, though. I, I think that's a, that's a fun one to look at. Plus, sitting there at an underdog with, with plus 114. Uh, so you, you're mm-hmm. taking a little, look, a little extra cash there on that one. So. I like mm-hmm. that. I feel like I feel like the way that we're doing this in units or winnings, however we end up uh, deciding it, uh, you know, it's 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 fun to to take a look at that and to put that into perspective too, because you can jump out ahead just like we did. Uh, we jumped ahead of Blake pretty quick, and he was killing us uh, in, the, in the last one. So uh, it's it's nice to be able to to see how that all plays out and plays into this competition. But again, guys, if you want to check out sports books that are available in your region, you can go to rising two dot com slash bet r i s i n g t o dot com slash b e t. It gives you all of the sports books available in your region. We are using a FanDuel for our bets this month of November, uh, so you can check that out and see if there's anything good there. They're giving five. Uh, if you bet five dollars, they're going to give you 150 dollars in bonus bets. That promotion may vary based on your location, and you must be 21 or older to bet. And please, by all means, bet responsibly. We we beg you. Um, but guys, it's been really fun, uh, and we we really do enjoy all of the support. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. We're working on our way towards 10,000, and we're trying to grow. All right, so keep on keep on helping us out. You can follow us on social media. Uh, you can uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, and TikTok, uh, all over the place over there. And we're posting a lot more out on social media. So you want to stay tuned and keep up with the show. Go over there and show us some love. And and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. We will be trying to read some more uh, reviews. Maybe I'll put that out for a Saturday episode since we will not have a Saturday episode this this week. Uh, Blake will be in Eugene. I will be traveling down towards Norman. Uh, so it's just not going to work out so great this weekend. Um, but guys, we thank you all so much for all of your love, all of your support. We hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. And we will see you next week. Have a good one, guys.